Um, okay, folks, firstly, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this Make Learn Strengthening Craft Education in Primary and Secondary Schools webinar. Um, my name is Neil Miller. I am the Senior Education Officer for Expressive Arts here at Education Scotland. And it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to introduce um, my fellow colleagues this evening and presenters from Make Learn. And I will kind of give you a, an overview of who they are. But just before I do that, I would just like to make note that today's webinar is being recorded. Um, and that is just for those delegates who can't attend today, we can be able to, they'll be able to watch it at a later on point in the due course. So I'm going to choose the presenters and then I'm going to disappear into the, the background and, and uh, listen and learn like yourselves. Um, first one up is Katrina Duffy. She is the co-director of PANEL, a curatorial arts organisation with a focus on design and making. She's joined by Deirdre Nelson, who is a maker who designed Care Not Consume, one of the three activity parks for the Make Learn Pilot Schools project. We also have Lydia Brownlee, who is a composite P5-6 teacher at Glendale Gallic Primary School, who participated in the Make Learn Pilot Schools project, and we'll talk about experience of delivering um, the Care Not Consume activity. Francis Davis, who is the project coordinator for Make Learn, and there are two other um, attendees as part of, of, of the team who will not present this evening, but I think it's important you know who they are. Um, the first one is Lucy McHechen, who is the co-director of PANEL. And lastly, but certainly not least, is Irene Kernan, who is the director of Craft Scotland, who co leads Make Learn in collaboration with PANEL. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you on to the presenters. I very much hope you get a lot from this, this evening. Um, and sit back and enjoy. Over to you. Thanks so much, Neil. Um, and hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we're really delighted um, to welcome you all to this webinar, which is focused on teaching through craft. So as Neil said, I'm Katrina Duffy, and I'm one of the team driving a new initiative called Make Learn, alongside Lucy McKechn and our partner on the project, Irene Kernan, who's the director of Craft Scotland. So this webinar is for you, teachers working in primary and secondary education with an interest in how craft and making can be incorporated across the curriculum and the benefits that it can have for learners. Um, as Francis said at the start there, we'd love to know who you are and where you're based. So please do introduce yourselves in the chat um, if you can. I know your, your cameras and microphones aren't turned on. Um, so we've had a little bit of a late start today um, and we're hopefully here until 5 p.m. or maybe just after if you have the time. And the format of today's event will be really, really simple. So we'd just like to start with an introduction to the Make Learn initiative and its pilot resources for schools. Um, and I'll, I'll then hand over to textile maker Deirdre Nelson and then over to primary school teacher Lydia Brownlee. And they will each, through their perspectives, discuss the Make Learn resources that we've produced. And we'll then end today's webinar with a focus on the specific ways in which Make Learn is looking to support teachers like yourselves in the future. And here we'd really love for you to participate, telling us what works, what doesn't work, and what you think is needed and other ways that you can be supported in the delivery of craft in your classroom. So we really hope that you will be up for that. Um, Frances, the project coordinator of Make Learn, is here in the chat space and so she'll be collecting any questions that you have as well as posting links to the relevant information um, that we have here throughout the course of the webinar. So, um, the initiative, Make Learn is a partnership between two cultural bodies, so that's MAKE, um, which is led by PANEL, and it's a manifesto for craft, advocating for craft makers across the country and their needs. And then also Craft Scotland, which is the National Development Agency for Craft, where learning and development was one of the three key strands of their programme. And so by working together, Make Learn has been designed to strengthen Scotland's craft sector through a review of craft education within primary and secondary schools. And through this work, Make Learn proposes the long-term value of teaching craft and making skills from early years through to further education and advocates for the inclusion of craft within Scotland's education curriculum. So to support this to date, um, 
Make Learn has delivered two connected but distinct areas of work. Uh, firstly, a research paper um, that provides us with key recommendations and next steps. And a link to the paper um, is posted in the chat if anyone would like to have a read through that later on. Um, so the paper evidences crafts well-being and emotional resilience benefits, its role in understanding culture, identity and heritage, its capacity as a driver for ethics, values and skills to advance the green economy of the future and its power as a tool to unlock learning across the curriculum. Crucially for us as well, the report has also advocated for better resources for teaching craft in classrooms and for national strategy for material skills development in schools. Um, and it does this because the key findings from the report show that participation in craft is widespread, but it is not equal. So young adults aged 16 to 24 are the least likely to participate in craft making, and those from less deprived areas are 50% more likely to have taken part in craft. Um, craft and making in schools is also not supported and is under-resourced. So 88% of the teachers we surveyed said that access to resources for materials and tools was a barrier to teaching craft in the classroom. And um, the loss of peripatetic art teachers in primary school, reduced teaching time in BGE, art and design at secondary school and computing priorities with ICT and digital technologies in the technologies curriculum have all contributed to reducing craft and making in the classroom. But drawing on the evidence from the reports, um, it's Make Learn's ambition to highlight these current gaps and to campaign to ensure that every young person is given the opportunity to learn through craft and to develop material skills. Yeah, so that's that's the research um, that we've been developing over the past couple of years. Um, but alongside the research paper, um, we also wanted to look at how we could practically um, support the evidence that the research paper had, had developed. So um, we um, put together a pilot project for schools working directly with craft makers. Um, so we developed three activities connected that connected craft meaningfully to other areas of the curriculum through the pilot. Firstly, developing heritage making skills through a weaving activity led by Eve Yunson of Fair Isle. Secondly, exploring issues around climate change through a plaster casting activity led by a Glasgow based jeweller called Stephanie Chong. And finally, learning about sustainability and the circular economy through a sewing and darning activity led by Glasgow based textile designer Deirdre Nelson. And for the pilot, um, resources were developed for children at BGE level and were adaptable for use in the classroom as well as at home or in other settings. Um, as well as delivering them during the school term, they do continue to be available to download from our website and we'll post links to those in the chat just now too. Um, they're also available in English, Polish and Urdu. And for the pilot, each guide came with a pack of materials and tools and accompanying film and the film introduced the maker, the skill and the wider learning context alongside providing instruction for the activity in tandem with a printed guide. And through these resources, it was our aim to provide children with an imaginative craft challenge, encourage children to explore contemporary craft processes and try out different materials. Um, to be suitable and accessible to different learning levels and to be delivered by a teacher or independently. Um, and we, we suggested that was over three one hour sessions. And these activities were delivered um, to, as a pilot, to over 400 children within schools across Argyll and Butte and Glasgow City during 2021. And so we just wanted to put up a few slides um, of the responses that we had to the pilot project, um, which were overwhelmingly positive and really highlighted for us the benefits of craft and making, not only as a part of the expressive arts curriculum, but as an effective tool for unlocking other areas of the curriculum too. Um, so hopefully you can get a chance to kind of um, have a quick look at these, these um, quotes from pupils and teachers. Um, so, sorry, I'll just move back there. 
So that's a quick introduction to the project. Um, but now we'll get into the kind of real meat of the webinar and, and hand over to maker Deirdre Nelson, who will introduce her resource, Clear Not Consume, um, and the experience of working with as a maker uh, within schools. Deirdre will then be followed by a response from Lydia Brownlee, a primary teacher whose primary five class participated in the pilot, working with Deirdre's resources. Um, and we'll have an opportunity to ask questions to both Deirdre and Lydia after their presentations. So if you have any questions, please do type them um, into the chat as they come to you and Francis will pick that up. But I'll hand over to you now, Deirdre. OK, thank you. Um, so I'm a textile artist, uh, studied embroidery at Glasgow School of Art, um, have uh, been, I suppose, a maker all my life. You know, when I think about working with children, I think about my own childhood and making and doing craft was a very natural part of my way of knowing and understanding the world really. I, I don't remember learning particular skills like sewing and knitting and I realised through you know a lot of work in schools that um, things have changed and there's generations that, that don't work in or you know that children haven't learned some of these crafts or don't even know the sort of terminology to, to describe some of the the processes. So I feel very privileged that I've had that sort of upbringing but so I've spent quite a lot of time actually working with children in schools and doing workshops and activities that sort of promote traditional techniques um, and and promotes the sort of I suppose the the sort of well-being aspects of being able to do things like um, sewing and knitting and getting lost in making with your hands. Um, and I suppose I've done a lot of work um, in education myself, but not so much creating kits or um, kits sort of something that can be disseminated or passed out to a lot of children within school. So this, this was a really interesting approach to sort of think about how I could do that and how I could put forward information in a, in a way that could be passed on to teachers and, and pupils. Um, so has that moved on? Um, has the slide moved on there? I, um, it hasn't, but if you if you click on the actual um, oh, icon, is that it now? You've got it now. Yeah. So I uh, I just thought as by way of explaining some of the work that I do, um, I do a lot of embroidery and knit, and this is a piece of work that was um, created for an exhibition called We Are Commoners. And it was um, looking at acts of commoning, so um, things that communities are doing, sharing resources, um, things like, um, I suppose, looking at things like community gardens and allotments, repair cafes, ways that people are working together to make, I suppose, good things happen in environments. So this is a piece of work I made for this particular exhibition, which is a map of um, all the things that are going on within two kilometres of, of my house in the south side. Um, so I mapped everything that was going on from uh, the pair of cafes to community gardens. And it was all uh, embroidered in a particular technique where thread is couched down on the, on, on the surface of fabric. A quite laborious task, but an amazingly mindful task. And this is something I suppose I'm quite interested in, in terms of, you know, thinking about the way children um, behave when they're doing an activity like um, like sewing or knitting. Um, I think there's a sort of peace and calmfulness comes from from um, children being engrossed in that sort of activity. Um, so this this is part of the this piece of work is part of the film as well. If you get a chance to to look at it and you can understand a little bit more of, um, about my work. Um, so in putting the kit together, I suppose uh, it's trying to think of some way that you could uh, get a message across but also come up with meaningful activity in order to do that. So thinking about uh, the circular economy and textiles within the circular economy, um, we began to think of ways that um, we could encourage the children to think about caring for their clothes and not thinking about clothes being something to be um, you know, fastly consumed and, and then thrown away. So we're thinking about the ideas of repair. And um, I'm a volunteer at Repair Cafe in Glasgow, so repair is a big part of my um, my work as well and the skills involved in repair. So we were trying to also think about, um, you know, maybe which techniques could work with that. And darning was one of the techniques, and darning a sock was one of the things. And then also 
thinking about maybe ways we could get the children to think differently about garments and you know who made their garments, how long it's last, where it's been made, what it's made from. Um, so the kit involved, um, I suppose part of the kit was educating children also about the materials that are needed to create those things and I find through working in schools the children often would call sewing knitting or they'd call um, a sewing needle a pin and and even the terminology wasn't there so I think part of um, you know even just having this kit full of amazing materials and helping children to understand these materials and what they're used for and what their their purpose is um, and for me it was exciting to see this kit come together you know see the ideas I suppose come together in a in a sort of physical physical form um, so the kit comprised, comprised of two different activities, really. One was um, learning how to darn a sock. And within that, there was a um, sort of technical um, sort of illustrations showing how you would do that. And I suppose that's one of the simplest forms of, of darning. Um, so we thought about that as a way of um, what can you do interesting for the kids to explore. And also some kids would have already done some things like weaving and really darning is a process of weaving. And I know the children do that with paper, you know, often as an activity in school. The other activity was creating a patch for a garment and the patch became like a, I suppose, a way of telling the story of the garment. So uh, instead of thinking of the garment as being damaged, we sort of proposed that you, the children would look and see well, you know, what has happened to the garment? Like, what, um, how did the rip happen? You know, what, what were you doing? What was the adventure of the garment? What was it up to when this thing happened? So I suppose creating a fun way of creating a repair, but also helping the children understand a little bit more about the garment, where it's come from, how long it could last, what you can do to make car um, garments last. And the, I mean, I've seen some of the examples of the things that the children have done, but, and I, I was really impressed when I went to Glendale and the children were showing me their darning and also just how enthusiastically they talked about this activity, which was really fantastic. And I'm sure we'll hear from the teacher just how it worked practically in the in the school setting. I mean, I suppose I'm, I'm used to being in the classroom working with children. So for me, it's quite interesting to see how these things can work. Um, without the artist there and how you can actually pass across the information through through a kit like this. Um, so the I mean I, I didn't I didn't actually see the children doing the activity but as I say I you know I I saw the results of it and uh, was very impressed at their their darning and and actually I've met a mother of some of the children since and she was wearing a jumper. I met her in another context and she was wearing a jumper that was a result of this. So her children had actually kept on darning and kept up on looking for holes and things to repair within, you know, within the home. So that was fantastic to see. So I'll pass on to Lydia now. Um, hello, um, thank you for that Deirdre. Um, it's actually so lovely to hear you talking about the kind of aftermath of that project because I'm no longer working at, at the Gaelic school so I haven't actually seen the results of that so I love that the children are still um, keeping that up. So um, so my name is Lydia Brownlee, um, I'm a primary school teacher um, and was working at Glendale Gaelic School um, for a supply cover during the pandemic um, and I was lucky enough to get invited at that time to um, deliver um, Deirdre's project um, as part of Make Learn. Um, very fortunately for me, I also happened to have a pollution kind of IDL project going on at the same time, which worked really, really well with um, the craft. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, so my prior experience um, before doing this project, um, I'd done a design degree, so I had maybe greater confidence um, than I would otherwise have done in terms of delivering a visual um, arts workshop or craft workshop, but I didn't have much sewing experience and I hadn't done any darning before at all. So I was really kind of out of my comfort zone in terms of craft. Um, so I'm gonna talk a bit, little bit about my experience of delivering the project practically, um, and then a little bit about why I think craft is important um, and how it can link in with other curricular areas. Um, so, 
when I got given the materials for the um, repairing project, um, before we kind of got to the point of doing the making in the classroom, I completed the activity by myself. So I took the dining mushroom home, I took a sock and I had a go at um, mending it myself, just so that I knew the process that we were going to go through and could see what would be those snagging points in the factory. Um, I, I identified some changes that I needed to make, just very little things um, before I delivered it, um, such as pre-teaching some of the skills. So going right back to basics, thinking about how do we thread a needle, how do we fasten a, um, a thread on and off. Um, so before we started on the project, before I'd even introduced MakeLearn, we just did a little 15 minute slot in the class, um, all trying to thread a needle, all trying to tie a knot in a string um, and in a thread and that really helps to uh, make it a little bit more of a smooth process when we actually came to um, darning our items. So the children were asked to bring in something to school that was holy but it was not too precious. Um, we knew that it would be um, maybe not the neatest darning so we didn't want anything too expensive coming in but also the children and again the families um, seemed to be really proud of these items afterwards so it was a really good outcome. Um, we completed session one of the project, which was, um, Deirdre kind of mentioned part of it, um, talking about creating a tag for your clothing that describes where it's come from, the materials that I've made, and kind of the journey of the item. So we discussed ideas of the circular economy and of fashion, and started to open up those avenues of questioning um, about where clothes come from, why it's important to mend things. Um, so that's kind of where we were at before we started actually um, sewing in the classroom. Um, so this is the part that I imagine, um, if, if you're anything like me, gave me a little bit of fear beforehand, um, just the idea of having all of this going on in the classroom all at once, um, but it actually was really successful. So I decided to switch around um, the order of the projects that were in the um, in DHS pack. So we did the patching element first, and when I practiced it, I found that a lot easier, um, because it's just doing a running stitch around the side of the patch. Um, so we introduced with that in the morning I decided to do it as a, a kind of two day um uh, sorry a one day focused um, um on doing the task so I didn't do any of my literacy and things through the day that I just focused on the make learn and did it all at once and um, so we did the patching in the morning and then we had a go at doing the darning after in the afternoon there was quite a lot of um I'm stuck, I can't do this, I can't get my needle to thread um, at the start and I kind of had set up a system of I'll put your names on the board and I'll get to you when I get to you and by the time I'd got to people's names, um, by and large they'd actually fixed it themselves so the children were realising I can, if I persevere at this I can do it quicker than the teacher will get to me um, which was really good because it taught them to kind of stick with something and, and if something's tricky just keep going, give it another go. Um, it was open-ended, so when children had kind of finished patching, um, some of them started embroidering their own designs onto them, um, helping other children. So I didn't have that. Um, I didn't have children going, "What am I going to do next?" There was it was obvious that they could carry on using their sewing skills, and they were really excited to do that. So the picture that we have here is actually um, you can see. Um, the girl in the class had patched her leggings and then she decided to use her extra material to make a little scarf for herself um, and was really pleased with what she'd come up with. Um, so the impact of this in my classroom, um, I put a couple of quotes from the children there. There was a huge sense of achievement. So at the end of the day, even the ones who'd been uh, maybe a little bit reluctant at the start of the day or had been really find it tricky to get that needle threaded um, and maybe didn't have the darning that looked the most beautiful but everyone was really proud because they'd managed to do something they'd managed to mend that hole in the sock or they'd mended a rip in a t-shirt and um, so there's a massive sense of achievement and um, the focus on the process was really um helpful so it helped us to think about um maybe not the final appearance of the of the garment that we'd made but the things we'd learn along the way, the, the functionality of it as well. So it didn't have to look perfect, but it could do its job. Um, and that links in with all the stuff that we do in the class around both mindset all of the time. Um, and it also offers a life skill to children. So um, I think it's brilliant that these children know how to um, thread a needle now. They can uh, put a button on clothing if that comes off. They can mend a sock. So that's something that just carries on forward um, and makes you kind of feel like you can take on a challenge yourself so I think those were the important impacts of the project 
um, kind of more widely from this, um, the benefits of learning about craft and skills. It was building connections with um, the, the relatives that maybe knit or sew in the family. One of the children was talking about um, someone in the islands who um, has a boat and they'd helped working on a boat with her granddad. So it's all of these stories that come in when you start talking about what do we know about craft, how are things made. Um, and it also helps us to think about maybe the history of our community and things that were going on um, before you could go to Primark and buy something really quickly. Who was making the clothes? Where did they come from? Um, it opens up these wide um, conversations about culture, history and, st and sustainability um, by interrogating everyday objects to understand um, kind of ideas and processes that are so important in our modern society, the business of production um, and where uh, the things that we need to come from. Um, just get my next thought. Sorry. Um, the challenge of making something had such a good level of difficulty. Um, the basic skills were quite straightforward and could be taught straight away, but there's so much space for growth in sewing. So um, they, if children wanted to carry on doing that, like the one that we've heard about, um, there's so much um, so much improvement that you can see every time that you do um, sewing or do darning. Um, so there's, it models the perseverance that need, that's needed to improve the skills across the curriculum. Um, just, I really liked what Deirdre said about getting lost and making with your hands. There was such a, a lovely environment in the classroom when we took um, part in this project. Um, at points it actually got really quiet and as children got really focused, um, the task was just tricky enough to focus in on and maintain concentration um, and it was a really calming and mindful activity. Um, I also think that these things can be really useful for facilitating conversations between children. It's easier to have a chat when your hands are doing something. So it, it was a really lovely, um, I think, like mental health break for the children as well. Um, whenever I hear about something like this that sounds great on paper to do in the classroom, I'm always kind of thinking, well, where am I going to fit that into my uh, day? We're all really busy. Um, so I've had a little think um, about how I see it fitting in with so many things across the curriculum. Um, so as I mentioned, I was working on a pollution project um, whilst I was at the point when I delivered this in the class. Um, and so it linked really well into this IDL topic. Um, there was na a natural link between the art and design that we were doing, but also we got into such interesting conversations about um, plastic pollution, microplastics, um, waste, fast fashion. Um, so there was such a a rich theme of um, learning to come from this craft project, um, especially good links with learning for sustainability, which is such a focus at the moment. Um, so I've put together a few ideas of how the Mending project, project would link with curricular areas um, that I'll talk about on the next slide, but this is just an example. It could be done starting from really any other craft, ceramics, weaving, paper making. All of these have um, natural connections with um, sustainability, business. Um, so I'll show you some examples on here. Um, so I've put a few of the E's and O's at the bottom that I thought linked in with um, the wider project that I did around the making. Um, you can see that in maths, we can think about making a mending business, calculating the material cost, thinking about the living wage and how, how um, the cost of a garment doesn't maybe reflect how much uh, time has gone into it. Um, thinking in science about testing materials. Um, Deirdre was talking about how children have maybe not come across um, the threads before, or the, the needles before. So you're getting an experience of different um, materials and the, the properties of them as well. That links in really well with science. Um, in social studies, there's so many things that we could do. So we learned about uh, different types of pollution, um, microplastics, water pollution, um, thinking about where clothing and materials come from and why, and that opens up so much uh, discussion around, um, I mean, simply looking at like where these places are on the map that are written in our clothes, but also thinking about how things are transported, um, and then moving on with older years, maybe into thinking about the ethical trade of clothes and how to, how, um, to make sure things are fair within the um, fashion industry. Um, in expressive arts, um, we could think about 
creating the personal embroidery on the, on the mended item, creating designs, looking at the work of a craftsperson like Deirdre Nelson, um, and thinking about maybe the colours that we're using, complementary colours in the patching and the um, darning. Um, I'm going to have a look on the next slide at a literacy idea um, that I use in class. Um, there's a lot of um, story writing you can do around the idea of a craft object, so um, the idea of a mended item and where it's maybe been, the stories of how it got all of the holes in it, um, and then other crafts like thinking of maybe ceramic objects being like a magical item or jewellery objects um, as a kind of hook for getting, getting children into um, a writing project. Um, we did a persuasive writing activity of writing to about reducing clothing waste um, so to persuade people to um, recycle and mend their clothes um, and you could also look at making instructional writing and how-to videos about how to actually do the craft itself so there's so many links that this can have with the rest of the curriculum so you're hitting a lot of E's and O's through the delivery of a craft project um, and finally I'm just going to talk through um, how one of these um, craft activities can link with um, literacy um, through the higher order think thinking skills questioning. So um, it's really nice to bring in a craft object to the class. So the example here is um, some really lovely pottery. Um, and if you can have it and pass it around and the discussion that comes out of that can be really valuable. So um, I think a lot of the, the, the kind of tactile element of having the object in front of you um, really sparked a lot of conversation that's brilliant for um, like talking and listening skills um, and then as a stimulus for further writing and also just using those um, thinking skills to imagine where the object has come from um, think of a title for the object and the use of the object um, so building up connections with what the children already know and the objects that they might have in their home um, and extending that out into the wider world um, and learning about craft at the same time. Um, so I'm going to stop talking there because I, I know that there'll probably be a lot of questions and it would be really interesting to hear about that. So I'll pass back now to, I think, to Katrina. Thanks so much, Lydia, and thanks so much, Deirdre. Um, that was that was really great and it gives us new insight into the kit um, and the way that you both spoke about um, how craft can connect across different areas of the curriculum was really inspiring. So I'm just going to hand over to Francis now, actually, um, who is um, mediating the chat. Um, Francis, if you can let us know if there have been any questions, um, that would be fantastic. So we've got no um, no questions in the chat just now, but if you do have any um, things that you would like to ask either um, Deirdre or Lydia to expand on from the presentation or, or indeed the wider Maitland team, um, do, do feel free to pop your question in the chat. Um, I can also see next to me uh, a keen member of the um, Maitland team itself who um, has a question. So maybe whilst we um, probably in a few minutes to add anything themselves, I'm going to um, ask uh, Lucy to <laughs> share hers because I can see her keen to come yeah. in. Thanks so much, Francis, and thank you, um, Lydia and Deirdre, for your presentations. That's really, really brilliant and, and fascinating to hear, you know, how the kit was developed and how you experienced working with that. Um, so just, just a question for Lydia, actually, and, and potentially the, the kind of wider group is, you know, what's your experience of um, accessing materials for craft activities in the classroom? Um, and also maybe what's your, uh, you know, if there's any barriers to that and um, how, how you do that. And if you have noticed any um, kind of differences between, you know, like children's experience in handling materials as well and their familiarity with that. You mentioned a little bit about the threads that were in the packs that, that were provided. Yeah, I think um, I, it can sometimes feel like you don't have necessarily the best materials at your disposal. So um, I think it's being quite, you have to be quite creative with, uh, you know, saving up things that um, maybe that's going to be useful for a project because the reality is there's not usually a lot of budget for buying in like specific um, craft items. Um, I think it's, re I personally think it's really important that we, we try and 
find the opportunities for children to use these things and to have uh, like the, maybe once get an opportunity to use clay whilst they're in school or just so you've, you've experienced making in a different way um, and I know that I've I've taught children where they're maybe not they don't like drawing or they don't like uh, they're maybe not confident as a creative writer but when they've got a 3D material it's been a really kind of that's been their thing and that's really got them into it so I think um, although it, it's sometimes something that we it's not a priority in the budget I think it's so so important um but having said that I do think there are so many uh really good ways of kind of recycling reusing things that um can be really cost effective as well and I I'm a member of like a bartering group on Facebook where sometimes somebody will be like I've got 300 milk bottles or something like that and so taking those opportunities to um, use like non-traditional craft materials can be really useful as well um, but yeah you've got to be a savvy shopper I think <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone anyone else wanted to say anything about that but... thanks so much Lydia sorry can I ask another question <laughs> as well and it was just related to um the fact that this this particular resource was um you know delivered into the classroom during kind of restrictions um and how helpful did you find um the accompanying booklet and then the there was also a film that was uh, you know that accompanied the activity as well and is that something that was that was really that was you know useful and valuable and if if we went back to a scenario where or experimented with makers in the classroom so having a an artist or professional in the classroom would those resources still be of value in terms of you know your resort teaching resources yeah so i think um in a way um it's actually really fortunate that the way that these were delivered by the teacher because it means that the resources that i was able to get other than the pack which is a shame that we can't give one of those to every school but that booklet is what i used so if anyone else wants to take that up that that was all I needed to be able to kind of deliver the project. Um, I have I haven't met Deirdre before today, and it's really nice to see you. But I was able to through the book, um, kind of have everything that I needed to take on those skills. Um, and that was I mean, as a teacher, that was a really like quite an interesting and and kind of exciting challenge to have. I, I think it's I'm also really excited every time we have someone come into school. I think that that's so important as well for children to be able to meet craftspeople and, and ha ask questions. And um, I, like when people can bring their own work into school, talk about their sketchbooks and things like that, I think is like magical and beyond what I can do in the classroom. But I think in th this context, it's, um, it's something that's actually a real uh, asset is that this resource is is so intensive and so kind of clear that you can deliver it as a non-specialist um and i can't remember what the other part of what you said was um but yeah but i think it i would recommend um people having a go and um, also i youtube is your friend because if you're, if you're a little bit stuck on how do i do this there's somebody who will explain it in very very de detailed words um but kind of any kind of craft. So, um, we do have a couple of um, questions in the chat, and the um, first one um, from um, Neil, who was I, I'm not. I think this potentially could be directed, and maybe both to you, Lydia, and, and perhaps actually also um, the um, sort of Mate Learn um, team, which is, did anything go wrong? Um, I think that's maybe a question for you, Lydia. And then maybe whether there's anything you change about the implementation and how that was delivered. And I think here maybe, Lydia, you might have some things to say, but I think that's also something that we as a project team are thinking about for the next iterations. Um, so maybe um, Katrina might want to respond on that too. But I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer first, Lydia. So is anything that yeah. went wrong or you changed? Um, I think I would, I would maybe try and have an extra member of staff in for support so I kind of did it flying solo and it would have been really helpful I think to have maybe a, like a PSA or someone if, if the resource had allowed it um I, I also I mean I, I, as I said in the presentation I kind of switched things around a little bit with the order and that, that worked quite well um but I think overall I was quite I was really pleasantly surprised with how 
how it worked. I think I was a bit apprehensive. Um, it was a class that I'd not been with for that long as well. And uh, because it was after COVID, it was kind of, there was some kind of reluctance with certain things. Um, but I think it was, people really got, the children really got on board with it and got quite um, really engaged with it. Um, I kind of wish that I'd had the time to build on it and, and kind of have a sort of, maybe prog progression of those skills that I would carry on with. Um, it was very much a standalone thing, although we did other curricular things around it, we didn't do any more sewing after that. And so I think that would have been kind of maybe something I would do if I was doing it again, is build it into a programme or maybe teach it in a different way and rather doing it than doing it as an intensive day, like split those out and have that as maybe a term of, of your art and design lessons or your technology lessons. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think just to echo that, um, we designed it so that it could be completed within three one hour sessions or over a day like like Lydia um, did. But it would be, I think, an ambition of ours to make that into a longer term programme. Um, and also like a key, a key thing for us would be to look at the resources um, and, and how we can provide those in a more democratic way um, to teachers across the, the country. Um, so that's those are the two kind of key issues that we came up with immediately as we looked at how to develop a pilot project and, and the, poten the potential of how that pilot project could be rolled out across uh, more schools. So we, we worked with, um, I think it was uh, six schools in total, three in Argyll and Butte and three in Glasgow City. Um, but we'd obviously love to expand that out. And I think if we expanded it out, we would look at some of the practicalities of that and the barriers that teachers might face um, really seriously as a part of that. Yeah, and um, just picking up too, I think um, more Sutherland in the chat is echoing those same um, difficulties around accessing resources um, and um, I would encourage um, particularly um, you to look at some of the PDFs that are available and that, that we've posted in the chat because I think um, particularly this project can be um, delivered with, with, although there were beautiful packs sent out to schools, actually with, with relatively um, yeah, limited uh, materials, but you, you have the activity as a PDF to, to guide your work. Um, I hope that helps. Um, but I think that's covering the chat and we are moving swiftly towards the um sort of five o'clock end so i'm going to hand back to katrina just to round us off and do brilliant thanks so much francis and, and thanks to everyone and um, for asking uh, questions there that made made a lot make a lot of sense to the way that we've been thinking about developing make learn and um, we just wanted to kind of finish talking about make learn generally by touching upon um, some of the case studies that we also came across within our research. So the pilot project, um, you know, doesn't explore everything that, that CRAFT covers. And um, so we also brought together 10 case studies um, of other work happening within education with a focus on CRAFT um, across Scotland. And I'll just quickly focus in on two of the, the pictures here in this, um, this kind of medley. And um, firstly, Making Circles by Ostrero, which is the black and white picture there at the top. Um, this project um, used craft and making as a conduit for learning again about the circular economy, um, but taking materials otherwise destined for landfill and repurposing them into functional objects um, that could in turn then be disassembled and turned into something else once those objects had come to the end of their usefulness. Um, so making circles worked in schools um, in P4 to P7 classes all across Scotland and um, working with two professional makers. So Silversmith, Bryony Knox and Mella Shaw, who's in the picture, who is a clay artist. And secondly, just the picture below that, um, which was um, Historic Environment Scotland's venture with St Modens High School in Stirling. Um, and they ran an SQA accredited qualification in tra traditional building craft. Um, so there are concerns um, from the construction industry and sciences, including medicine, that young people are leaving school without basic hand skills uh, needed for a vast array of work. Um, and there's also, you know, from um, 
from um, Historic Environment Scotland's perspective, there's also a range of traditional and heritage craft jobs open because the skills just aren't there to fill them. And so this project sought to address those issues um, and they worked with um, participating S5 pupils um, and they not only learn practical um, skills and tool use and material handling, but also um, other skills that would stand them in good stead for whatever um, future career path they chose. Um, so these case studies, um, I guess, showed for us the growing evidence and appreciation for craft and making in education and that they contribute really to the following priorities found within Scotland's national education policy. Um, so creativity, interdisciplinary learning, employability, learning sustainability, and really importantly, and I think um, Lydia and Deirdre both touched on this, mental health and wellbeing targets too. Um, so information about all of these case studies, um, as well as the pilot project and the research paper that we spoke about at the beginning, are available to find um, on our website, um, makemanifesto.com. Um, and we're currently, um, the, the website also includes details about the work that we're currently developing on over 2022 and 2023, which includes campaigning um, to include craft activity within the curriculum in Scotland. Um, so I'm now going to hand back over to uh, Francis, because um, we'd love for um, you teachers to help us to shape this work and to participate in a poll that can help us really understand what works and what the barriers are to teaching craft in the classroom. Um, your views are really important to us and we don't want to move forward without getting as much feedback from teachers as possible. So I'll hand over to Frances now um, and she can um, fill us in on the poll. Yeah, that's, um, that's great, thanks. So yeah, as Karina said, we wanted to end just by um, collecting um, some, some views um, from, um, from, from uh, teachers in the room. And I think um, Education Scotland um, staff are gonna pop up the first of these polls. Now we've had a test run earlier and the polls appear differently for different people for reasons we don't fully understand. However, shortly you should see um, poll one, um, there's a question, do you currently use craft in your teaching? Um, pop up in the chat. We think it should do that for everybody and you should have some options to answer. Yeah, so for some of you, it might also have popped up in the middle of your screen. And for some of you, you may have an empty box in the middle of your screen, but you should all be able to see and vote um, on the poll in the chat box. Um, so the question is, do you currently use craft in your teaching? And if so, how? So your options are no. Yes, I teach standalone craft activities as part of art lessons. And yes, I use craft activities when teaching a range of different subjects. Um, give everybody a couple more seconds to respond. Um, we're asking this in part just to understand how people are currently using um, craft in, in their learning. Okay. And it looks like... I think you should also all be able to see the responses. And as they're coming in, there's a kind of um, uh, a, a nearing um, half standalone, fewer um, teaching using craft in a range of different subjects. And um, a similar um, number um, who are not. So that's really helpful for us to, um, to see. The second poll which will pop up in the same um, way, I think, in just for a moment, um, is asking whether there are any barriers to your teaching craft activities, um, and if so, um, what they might be. I'll give. Okay, so that should now be in the chat for you. So the question is, are there any barriers to you teaching craft activities? And you've got some options. You've got no, no barriers. Um, yes, funding. Uh, yes, confidence or expertise. Um, and yes, time or other curricular priorities. Um, 
I think for this, you can select more than one if that is relevant to you. Um, okay, interesting. I see um, definitely shared across participants in the room, there are, there are barriers, but I think they really resonate with some of the things that have come through the Make Learn research thus far. And just to um, sort of end the polling, it's useful for us to understand what the barriers are, but also what would be helpful. I suppose we're thinking about the next phase of the project. Um, it's, it's really important to us that it, it responds to needs. So the last poll, and we should pop up in the chat in just a moment, um, asks, what would you find most useful to support you to integrate craft into your teaching work? Um, let's see, we'll give that a moment to pop up. Um, so yeah, what would you find most useful? A craft maker in residence at your school or um, access to craft makers? More CLPL opportunities? Or resources and guides that map out how you can employ craft as an approach to teaching across the curriculum? Should also say, if you are answering this poll and thinking, absolutely, these are not the things I would find useful, you are welcome to enter um, just into the chat free choices. If there's anything else that you think um, would be of use and that maybe we should be thinking about as we develop the next phase of the project. Okay. So, resources coming through strongly again. Um, and, and followed by, I think Deidre, you'll be pleased to know, having craft makers um, at school. So I think um, great. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your views. As I say, um, as we're looking forward, um, understanding um, more from, from teachers what's needed is really helpful. And I can see some uh, free choices coming in too. So thank you, Morag and Catherine, um, for adding, um, adding to the options that we've provided. That's really, really helpful. I'm going to hand back to Katrina just to close us out. Um, thanks for sharing your views. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really, really insightful to see those poll results coming through and to hear more from you just generally about what you you think we should potentially be looking at as we develop um, initiatives, resources and activities for Make Learn. Um, our future work will be also involve um, lobbying to um, Parliament and to local councils, um, as well as to speaking to more teachers um, and craft makers to really interrogate and find out what would be the best next steps to take in terms of supporting the development of teaching craft in schools. So um, we're just after five o'clock now and it's been it's been really brilliant to um, kind of hear from you all as much as we can through this webinar and to share um, our pilot resources from the Make Learn project with you today. We really hope that you found the research um, valuable and we'll be sending out links um, to all of the resources and guides to you in an email um, tomorrow or in the next few days. So please do look out for that. Um, and please do, um, if you'd like to, um, keep in touch by um, emailing us at the address here to receive updates from MAKE, um, or if you're just interested in finding out more about the initiative and keeping up, um, keeping in touch about future developments to the, pro to the project. Um, so yeah, so thanks so much once again, and thanks go to Educators in Scotland for hosting us today, to Lydia and to Deirdre for um, giving us their time and their insight um, so carefully and thoughtfully. Thank you so much. Um, and thanks to you all for joining us. Um, and please do keep in touch. <laughs>